Good evening, everybody. Hello, how are you today, my dear participants? Welcome to Joao, Vicky, eh, Vladimir, Carlos, good Raquel. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, evening, Morenita, Victor, Carlos, okay, Janari. Good evening, teacher. It's good to have you here, my dears. It's a pleasure. Uh, good evening. We are finishing today, imagine. So it's very, um, uh, we are uh, very emotioned because uh, we are going to finish one of our goals. So I congratulate you because you were able to continue until here, right? So we are very excited about that. There is a big emotion, <laughs> right? By feeling uh, this, um, fulfilling all the requirements to finish this module. Okay, so for tonight, what we are going to do is to have a fast review of the model, right? So we are going to discuss uh, and we are going to have a fast review about what we study uh, during the whole module. And then at the end, we are going to have uh, the final exam, right? So uh, if you remember, we started the lesson objective uh, one by talking about the transportation means. So uh, I would like to ask you quickly, what did you learn about this unit? Uh, I would like that you can remind and that you can tell me, uh, what did you learn in this unit? So I will need a, a lot of participation from you tonight in order that we can do um, a fast review, but a review that can tell us what uh, you will learn, right, together. And if you have any doubt or question that maybe is not clear, we can go back and ask, okay? So, um, in addition to the vocabulary, what did you learn here? ¿Qué aprendimos aquí? Okay. Let me... I learned for the transportations, uh, yeah. Medals, uh, or I don't know. Uh, you, you learn new vocabulary. Yeah, new vocabulary. Vocabulary for the train, cars. Um. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Morinita. But also, I want to show you this. That is a very important uh, question that I would like that you can remember always. How do you get to work, right? That was an expression that normally we don't know how to say, how do you get to work, right? Eh, ¿Cómo llegas al trabajo? ¿Cómo vas al trabajo? How do you get to work? That's the right expression that we are going to use to ask that question, right? The other thing that I would like to say is that when you, let's, let's take the, the example that we have here and the picture that we have here. When you, when you go, uh, you say, I drive my car, right? Uh, or you can say, by car, right? Uh, I walk, I take the bus, uh, or I go by bus, right? I take the subway, I go by subway. I take the train, I go by train. I ride a bike, I ride a motorcycle, I take a taxi, right? So those are ways to say, how do you get to your workplace? And what transportation means uh, you use in order to move around the city, right? Move around the city. Okay. So the second lesson objective was related to simple present statement using regular verbs. Can somebody remember what they are called regular verbs? Can somebody tell me why? ¿Alguien me puede decir por qué se llaman verbos, eh, irre, perdón, verbos regulares? Eh, uh -huh. Porque al conjugarlos en el pasado no hay ca tanto cambio como en los irregulares. Excelente. En español. <risa> yes, don't worry. You can estructuralmente. estructuralmente Yes, yes. Yes, Morenita. Yeah. Thank you. You can answer in Spanish if you don't remember how to do it in English, okay? The important thing is that you can remember what's the, 
the question about. And then that's uh -huh. excellent, Morenita. It's a good answer. It, this is because uh, when you conjugate the verb, you don't have ma so many changes, right? So you just need to add ed, right, to the past, and it's the same of the past participle, right? In some cases, when the verb ends in e, like, um, let's see, um, let me, let me uh, cook, no, walk, take, uh, no, take is irregular. So let's see, um, let me show you later one example because I don't, I don't remember. Um, uh -huh. Yanari? Close? Close, yes, that's a good example, close. You just, thank you Yanari, you just need to add the letter D and it says closed, right? And um, in that case, you need to remember the rule how to pronounce the, the, the past, right? And there's a rule that I would like to share with you maybe in the next models. Um, we are going to learn that some verbs you pronounce T at the, at the end when there is a past of regular verb. Some of them you pronounce D and some of them you pronounce ED, the past, right? Depending on the rule on how they finish. But this is something that we are going to learn later. But the concept here is that, uh, as Morena said, they are called regular because they don't change the way they form their past tense. You just add ed or d if the verb ends in e, and it's the same for the past participle, right? So that's why they are regular verbs. And we have uh, also irregular, right? In the case of irregular verbs, we talk that you have to me memorize, you have to learn them by heart because they are very different from each other. And I, get, I, I would like to um, remember you that I gave you a list. So I would like that you can have that list, that you can uh, continue practicing, that you can uh, repeat that list because you need to learn them by heart. You need to memorize all the irregular verbs because they are different. Okay, so. Eh, en español, eh, recuerdan la lista de los verbos irregulares, ¿verdad? Creo que se las incluí en los materiales. Si no la tienen, me dicen porque ese es un buen punto, ¿verdad? Que ustedes los vayan uh -huh. repasando y se los memoricen porque eso sí hay que memorizar. Ok, eh, my next question. What has special the third person singular in the simple present tense? ¿Qué tiene de especial la, la tercera persona del singular eh, en el presente simple? ¿Alguien me puede decir? La, la, la tercera persona, teacher, siempre se le agrega la S y lo okay. demás es normal. Ok. ¿Y en who's third person? ¿Quién es la tercera persona? ¿Cuáles son los subject pronouns que son third he, person? He, she, it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, when there is a third person, you need to add a ES or S. For example, drive. Drive, the verb ends in E. So you just add S when you are talking about he, she, it. In the case of ride, it's the same, right? Rides. Live, lives. Uh, with this verb, I want to clarify something. Con este verbo quiero clarificar algo. Y fíjense que voy a tratar de compartirles. Solo si me permiten un ratito. Porque, eh, déjenme ver si lo tengo a mano. Porque a veces se da la confusión con, eh, y creo que ahora es el momento de, de compartirlo con ustedes. Cuando estamos viendo justo ese verbo. Ok. Just wait a minute for me, please. And then I'm going to share. Okay, so I have it here. And I need to share. Okay. So uh, this verb, uh, we have uh, two words, live and life, right? And I want to clarify because you may feel confused with this verb. 
Live is the verb to live. Vivir en. Vivir en un lugar, ¿verdad? So you say, I live, you live, he, she, it lives, we live, they live, and yes, that's it. And, and you live, right? The other is the same. El otro se escribe exactamente igual. Pero el otro no es un verbo. El otro, the other is uh, bien, bien. Uh, an adjective, right? It means en vivo, right? En vivo. Live. For example, Larry King live. Facebook live, right? If you see, they are written the same. But the pronunciation of the verb to live is that way. To live. I live, you live, he, she, it lives. We live, they live. But this is live. And it's talking about an event that is in person, right? En vivo, ¿verdad? You say uh, live music. Now the restaurants have opened with live music, right? Los restaurantes están abiertos con música en vivo. The Larry King live show. El show de Larry King en vivo. Facebook live uh, event. Evento de Facebook uh, en vivo, ¿verdad? So that's live, but they are written exactly the same. Se escriben exactamente igual, pero son dos cosas diferentes. One is a verb, and the other one is um, an adjective. Okay? So uh, that's, that's something that I wanted just to, to clarify for you. So I'm going to stop sharing because I don't want to spend uh, too much time. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the platform. And yes, I want to show you again. Okay, so what else uh, did we learn with a simple with a simple present? What do we use to to have negative sentences and questions? ¿Qué utilizamos para hacer preguntas y oraciones negativas? Who can tell me? Any? No. Oh, any? Yes. Okay. El do and does in yes. negative. Do and that. Do and does. Yes. We use an auxiliary, which is do and does. For example, when we need to uh, to write a negative sentence, we say doesn't. If we are talking about he, she, or it, we use does and the negative doesn't. For the, for the other subject pronouns, we use do and the negative don't. For example, he doesn't, um, he doesn't, uh, for example, uh, ride his bike to school, right? Uh, the other is, for example, um, he doesn't uh, take public transportation, right? Uh, and so on. So that's the way we use. Uh, we use the auxiliary do and does, and for the negatives is do and doesn't, and we use does for he, she, it. And when we have to make a question, we start with do and does. For example, do you, do you take the bus to go to your workplace? Or does he or she takes, and in this case, the verb doesn't take the S. It's a do you, does she, take a bus. We don't have to add the letter S because we are asking a question and we are using does as auxiliary. So we say, does he take a bus to go to the workplace? Uh, to his, I mean, or her workplace. Right? So uh, in the 1.5, we learn to make a simple present statement using irregular verbs, right? In this case, uh, in the platform, we learn, as I said before, to add uh, the rule for the third person singular. My father has a car. My mother does a lot of work at home. The bus goes downtown. And for the other uh, subject, there's no change. Um, in, in this case, uh, we learn also um, to use uh, irregular verbs, as I said before, you have to learn them by heart because they are different. Um, we'll solve all the knowledge check we have there. And later we talk about daily routines, right? Uh, daily routines. And in here was introduced the auxiliary do and does, as we were talking. 
And when we use the auxiliary does, we said that you don't have to add the letter S to the main verb. So the question is, does he have lunch at noon? Uh, no, he eats, in this case, yes, right? For, because we are not using don't, right? So he says, no, he eats lunch at one o'clock. Uh, in this case, uh, do they drive to work? Yes, they drive to work every day. So that's the way you use the, verb, the auxiliary do and does uh, for the main verb in case of questions. Also, we learned that when we have a simple present uh, question, but we need extra information, not only yes or no answer, you can use the WH word. The most common is what, but we have more. What, where, when we, when we talk about when, we use where, right? When we, took, when we use who we are talking about, ¿De qué hablamos cuando usamos who? ¿O de qué preguntamos? Somebody? ¿Quién? Ok. Why? ¿Por qué? Yes. And where? ¿Dónde? 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 Excellent. And who? who? ¿Cuánto? ¿De quién? ¿Cuánto? Whom? Whom? De quién? De quién? Whom? Uh -huh. uh, which? ¿Qué? ¿Cuál? 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 Sí, ¿cuál? ¿Cuál? Y también aprendimos eh, how, ¿verdad? How es how, cómo. How. how es cómo. Y aprendimos que habían varias variantes, ¿verdad? How much? ¿Cuánto? Eh, singular. Y how many? ¿Cuántos? ¿Verdad? Okay, but uh, going back, when we have to, make, to ask a question in simple present with a WH word, we're asking for more information. So we say, what time do you get up? In that case, I, I'm not limited to answer uh, yes or no. I have to answer the information you are requesting from me. In this case, what time? So I have to say time at 10 o'clock. Uh, when when we are using when we are asking for the third person, we use the same uh, does the same auxiliary. What time does he have lunch? And we remain we keep the verb the same because we are using an auxiliary, right? And when they try to work, right? So we okay. Uh, so uh, we also solve the knowledge check, right? And um, later we study about uh, um, scanning and sequencing events. Uh, this was a reading that you have uh, in, your, in your platform. Uh, so we talk about the schedules of Mike, uh, the schedule about, uh, I mean, no, Davis, uh, Joshua, and Maya. Okay, and in that, in, in that uh, reading, we um, reinforce, we provide feedback on how to use the third person room for a, a simple present. She goes to class, she takes the bus, she works, she studies, she gets up. Okay, uh, later in the section number two, let me see this, yes, we are okay with the time. Uh, we learn um, new vocabulary about places uh, for house and apartment. So we learn vocabulary for houses and apartment uh, inside and outside. Uh, so uh, in addition to that, uh, we'll, we uh, practice for a conversation about apartments and then we learn to answer with yes, no questions, right? Uh, so it means sh very short answers. For example, do you live in an apartment? Yes, I do. Or no, I don't. Does Chris live in a house? Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Uh, does the bedrooms have windows? Yes, they do. No, they don't. Does the house uh, have a yard? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Right? So in this case, what we learned was that, again, we have to use the auxiliary ver uh, do and uh, in the case of negatives don't and we have to use does or doesn't for he she it when we are asking questions or when we are um, answering negative uh, 
in a negative way, right? So we solve the 2.4 knowledge check, right? Uh, so for example, does Li uh, da Linda, do you live in an apartment? Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't. I live in a house. Um, does it have a yard? That sounds nice. Uh, do you live alone? No, I don't. I live with my family. It sounds nice. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I do. I have four sisters. Really? Does your house, because I'm talking about it, the house is it. Does your house have, have many bedrooms? Yes, it does. It has four, because I'm talking about the house, the, the house, excuse me. So that's why I use the, the pronoun it. Do you have your own bedroom? Yes, I do. I'm really lucky. In the 2.5, we learn about the vocabulary about furniture and other household items. That was the inside of the house. So we learn a lot of vocabulary. And we learn about um, some and no and any, right? For referring to um, countable and uncountable, right? right? And uh, then we learn about there is and there are. Can somebody tell me when we use there is? ¿Me puede decir alguien cuando utilizamos there is? Cuando es singular. Ok. And what's the meaning of there is? ¿Cuál es el significado de there is? Hay un. Hay. Hay. Uh, Hay. Singular. One. Hay. Excellent. And what's the meaning of there are? Plural. Plural. Hay to plural. Hay but plural. So we are counting two or more, right? Yes. Excellent. So we have uh, sentences like, there's a bed in the bedroom, there's no sofa in the bedroom, there isn't a table in the kitchen. And remember that there's, remember that there's is equal to there is. So there is, there's is the contraction, right? And the thing you, and the formula is there is, or there isn't plus a or no plus a complement, right? So that's in the video you have. And for the plural, there are some chairs in the kitchen. There are no chairs in the living room. There aren't any, aren't any chairs in the living room. Okay, then we have the knowledge check. And we finally um, develop uh, skills for scanning and reading for details. So we talk about two special houses, uh, you, uh, in this exercise you use there is and there are. For example, you said there is a porch with a pink floor. There are colorful paintings. There are many books. Uh, there is a wood burning stove. There are three chairs. There are two beds in the, in the floor, okay? And in the number three, the purpose was to practice describing ideas um, or activities uh, for different jobs, right? So we learn about uh, professions, uh, jobs, uh, prof and professions, and occupations, uh, vocabulary, and activities here. And basically, we learn about uh, to say what's his job, right? What's uh, her job, right? So remember um, the possessive, his, su de él, her, su de ella. It's su de, for an animal or thing, right? So um, when we say what's his job, maybe the answer is a profession, right? Or an occupation, he's a musician, she's a singer, right? Um, or he's um, a judge, for example. He's a police officer, right? So in this case, basically, we were using the um, possessive, right? And remember that the possessing, possessives were, were my, your, his, her, 
it's your um, and uh, our, right? So later in the 3.3, we learn more about WH questions. In this case, we learn how to pronounce it right. For example, where do you work? What do you do? Where does she work? What does he do? Where do they work? What do they do? In this video, basically, you learn how to sound natural when pronouncing um, or reducting the do or does, right? So you, what does he work? What does he do? So it's like you join the, the words in order to um, be more fluid when you speak. In the 3.5, we use WH questions with the simple present tense that we started uh, studying at the beginning. And we learn the structure basically. Uh, and then we use uh, the 3.7 knowledge check to measure if we have learned. And then, for example, we have some questions like, how does he like it? This expression is, que tanto le gusta, verdad? O, o, o si le gusta algo. In this case, we were talking about uh, the job, right? Of being nurse. Uh, how does she like it? It's difficult, but she loves it. We are talking about the profession of being nurse. Uh, where does your brother work? At the airport. He's a pilot. Oh, how does he like it? Again, asking about the, the job. He doesn't really like it. In this case, it's not a very positive answer. How like, how do your parents like their job? How do your parents like? In this case, the WH word, the auxiliary do, the subject, and then the complement. Oh, I guess they like them. I don't remember where do they work? In an office in the city. What do you do? That this what do you do is a very wide question that uh, because you can answer about your studies, you can answer about your profession and you can you can answer about some projects you are doing at that moment. Um, when the question uh, is um, is asked, so for example, wh what do you uh, what do you do? If somebody asks me, what do you do? I say, uh, well, I'm an English teacher. Um, I work um, every day with my students, and now I'm teaching online classes. So that's what I do. And in this case, the question is, I'm a student. The answer, I mean. Next question, I see. How do you like your classes? So we are talk talking about the classes. How do you like your classes? They're really, they're good. I like them a lot. Aquí hay un errorcito porque no es them, es them a lot. Okay, in the 3.8, we study the adjectives, right? We learn about adjectives and we learn how to do the two ways that are B plus adjective and adjective plus noun because they are different structures. Uh, for example, in the B plus adjective, we learn that um, we can use the, the correct conjugation of the verb to be. For example, a firefighter's job is dangerous. So the adjective is dangerous but you, you're using the verb be, so that's why the adjective goes at the end of the sentence. A doctor's job is stressful. Stressful is an adjective, but it goes at the end uh, because you're using verb be, right? But in the case of adjective plus noun, it's different because you have to write first the adjective and then the noun. For example, a firefighter has a dangerous job. Dangerous is the adjective and job is the noun that this adjective is modifying. A, doctor's, a doctor has a stressful job. Stressful is the adjective and job is the noun. So first goes the adjective and then the noun because we are not using the verb be. So the, um, the formula is the article a an plus the profession, right? Plus the apostrophe, plus the job, 
plus the verb to be plus the adjective. Or um, in, the, in the example is a firefighters, look, you have the apostrophe, the S, a job, then the verb be is the adjective, dangerous, exciting, uh, boring, all of them are adjectives. Okay, then we developed the 3.10 knowledge check, right? And we said a police officer has a dangerous job. Uh, a teacher has a stressful job. A plumber has a boring job. An electrician has a difficult job. A vendor has an easy job. Then we went to the 3.11 lesson objective, right? And in here we were, uh, we, we learn how to develop prediction and inferencing in skills after reading discuss, uh, and discussing an article on job profiles. And we uh, learn about Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck and Carlos Ruiz, right? So we learn about their jobs and we learn some other adjectives about their job. Um, for example, who said, who said after I win, I take a break? John Blue, right? Because John Blue was the boy that was testing the video games. I don't usually work in the summer. This is Carlos Ruiz, right? Remember that Carlos Ruiz uh, was a teacher, right? That, so that's why during the summer, he's on vacation. The restaurant closes at late, around 2 a.m. This was said by Lisa Parker, right? Because uh, she works in a restaurant for, uh, a part-time, right? She has a part-time job. After work, my feet and my arms are tired. That's said by Becky Peck because Becky Peck is a dog trainer, right? So it's a very uh, hard job. So here, uh, in this part, we were evaluating there is and there are, right? Uh, remember that you, uh, you know that there is is for singular, I, there are for, for plural, I, right? Uh, in this, uh, there we have the midterm exam. So because of the time, as I'm just going to skip it uh, because I think that you already did it, right? And uh, basically what we did is an evaluation of the topics from unit one to unit three. Then we continue in the model with the section four. In the section four, we learn about food vocabulary, right? And uh, we learn about uh, vegetables, we learn about cereals, we learn about fruit. And basically, basically we, we express our likes and dislikes, right? And do you remember how to say that something likes you very much? ¿Se recuerdan cómo expresar lo que me gusta y lo que no me gusta? Do you remember some expressions? I like. Yes. Okay, I like, but what other expressions? Teníamos otra, ¿verdad? Cuando a mí me gusta, pero puedo decir me encanta. You said? I love it. I love it. it. I love it. Yes, I love it. I like, I love it, right? Um, you can say I really like también. I really uh, like. I really like. Me uh -huh. gusta, ¿verdad? Um, but when you don't like something, how do you say? I hate. I hate. I hate. I don't like. I hate. I detest. Right? Yeah. And, then, and if you remember, we were talking about what we like for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. So we discuss about our favorite uh, food and meals. Okay. So let me advance a little bit more. Uh, and then uh, here we, we uh, learn about some and any. And we learn about countable and not countable nouns, right? And do you remember when we use some? ¿Se recuerdan cuando utilizamos some? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, remember that we use some basically for affirmative sentences, right? 
Puede ser para nombres contables eh, o no contables, ¿verdad? Eh, pero básicamente es por, para oraciones afirmativas. En uh -huh. exceptionally, exceptionally we use some when we offer something and we expect that the answer uh, is yes. For example, uh, would you like some tea? Okay. Um, o yo le pido, uh, can I have some coffee, please? Um, I'm asking or I'm offering, right? But only in these cases I can use some for questions. And normally some is only for affirmative sentences. For example, um, let's get some bread. Uh, let's see, we don't have more examples here, but we can say, uh, I want to buy some uh, I want to buy some bread for, for my sandwiches tonight. And this is an affirmative sentence. What about any? Do you remember when we use any? ¿Se recuerdan en qué caso utilizamos? Negative, negative, negative questions and question. Yes, negatives and questions, right? And uh, no matter if they are countable or uncountable, right? You use any for negatives and questions. So, for example, uh, do we need any bread? Uh, no, we don't need any bread, for example. Uh, no, we don't need any eggs, right? According to what is on the video from the platform. Excellent. So here, for example, uh, we have a conversation between uh, Adam and Amanda. And Adam says, um, this uh, Amanda starts and says the store doesn't have any potato salad. Well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make some, right? Do we have uh, any mayonnaise? No, we need to buy some. En ese caso no es una oración negativa, verdad? Porque no y después de la coma la expresión es afirmativa. We need to buy some. Okay, uh, we need some onions too. Oh, I don't want onions. I hate onions. Remember, you don't like, you, uh, this boy doesn't like uh, onions, so uh, he hates them, right? Uh, so um, Amanda says, then let's get any celery. And the boy says, no, I don't want any celery in my potato salad. But, let, but let's put some apples in it. Apples in potato salad? That sounds awful. <laughs> At the end, they, they couldn't get in arrangement with the food. Okay, uh, in the 4.5 lesson objective, we'll learn uh, about uh, some meals in different cultures, in different places around the world, right? Uh, even we learned that, that Japanese people normally use uh, to eat uh, fish for breakfast. Imagine, that's not very normal for us, but in different cultures that can be possible. Uh, then uh, we learn about frequency adverbs. Do you remember some frequency adverbs? Yes. Okay. When do we use always? What percentage of certainty we have that uh, do we have that something occurs? Well, it's siempre. Siempre, verdad? Hundred percent. Cien por ciento. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Uh huh. Usually. Fifty uh, percent. Ninety percent. Yes, like like ninety percent. Ninety. Often. It's like 70%. 70%. Right? Sometimes was like 50%, right? 50%. Yes. And hardly ever like 10%, right? And never mm. zero, right? Never is zero. Never. Zero. Never. Nunca, ¿verdad? Never. Eh, nunca, eh, casi nunca, algunas veces, es mitad, mitad de posibilidades. Often es como 70% de posibilidad, usually 90%, and always 100%. And the formula that we use was the subject plus the adverb of frequency plus the verb plus the complement, right? So I have here some uh, examples in the knowledge check. 
I hardly ever eat snacks at work. I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. Um, I often have dinner with my family, right? And I sometimes drink coffee. And, and then we move to 4.10 lesson objective that says that we, we, in this case, you discuss an article about special foods in, in order to continue developing your reading uh, skills, right? Uh, so uh, we learn about uh, some traditions of, uh, on food for special uh, occasions, for example, for Christmas, for New Year, and we learn uh, about what we do, for example, people in Spain, people in, in, in Greek, uh, the, the Greeks, the Jewish people, uh, and so many other cultures. Uh, some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round like ears. Some Jewish people eat apples with honey for a sweet year. Greeks eat basilopita, bread with a, a coin inside. Uh, in Spain, people eat at 12 grades for good luck in the new year. Uh, the Japanese eat rice cake for strength uh, in the new year. And some Americans uh, eat black eyed peas. Black eyed peas are like uh, coins. Okay, later, a little bit uh, faster because of the time, uh, remember that we learn vocabulary about sports, right? Uh, again, we uh, study WH questions. So in this case, I'm not going to stop because we already discussed it in a previous lesson. Later, we learn how to properly pronounce can and can't, right? Do you remember that we were practicing a lot in order that we can memorize how to pronounce it well? Can and can't. Uh, we have a lot of exercises and then we use can to express abilities, right? And we were saying what can we do and what we can't. And later, um, we continue talking about uh, abilities and talents. And um, the, the end of this is that you have to read an article that's, that uh, it's uh, named Raised, Raised in the US, right? So um, in this case, uh, you're talking about the Empire States and they are asking some information. For example, where's the place that it is located? Um, it says that Empire State Building ran up uh, the new, it, it's located in the New York City. Uh, the distance is 320 meters, according to the information. And from Irving to California and to Savannah to Georgia is the, um, is the answer for the question two, race across America, right? So that's the distance that people had to uh, cross, right, uh, in this uh, um, in this, uh, let's see, race. So the distance, 2,900 uh, miles, which is equivalent to um, some kilometers. So the riding, the winning times is eight to 10 days. Uh, the place is Arkansas River and the distance 25.7 miles. You, you can convert it into a kilometers and then the winning times, two hours. You need to read, uh, in this case, you need to read the articles in order to understand the questions and then provide the right answers, right? So uh, now we are going to start with the final exam. So this, this that you have here is the final exam. Um, because of the time, we won't be able to listen to the audio but I encourage you to do it because in that way you will be able to provide a very um, right answer. But for example, if you listen to the audio, where is Justin from? You listen that uh, she's from Canada, right? So Justin is a girl. What is my like? Uh, when you're talking about a person and you ask for a, a physical description, or a personality description, you use the question, what is the name of the person like? 
In this case, the answer is, he's a little quiet, but very funny. Okay, next question. What's the weather like? Again, we are asking for a description of the weather in this case. It's raining, but it's warm. Is Sue wearing a blue dress? No, she's not. She's wearing a suit. Remember, in, the, in here we are practicing the close vocabulary. So, in the part two, you have to read the answers and then write the questions. In this case, you already have the answer, so you have to write the question. Uh, the, the, the answer says, no, they are not from England, right? They are from Australia. So the question is, are they from England? You can write it in, uh, with the initial capital or initial small letter. That is no problem. Remember that you have to add the question mark. If you don't have the question mark, um, you can have problems because the platform is very sensitive. And you need to follow like the logic. This exercise is for you to follow the logic. For example, they start asking, what's your name? My name is Tim. Are your parents in Peru? No, they are not in Peru, they are in Canada. So the next question is about the parents of, uh, about Tim's parents. And the question is, are they from England? Right, no, they are not from England, they are from Australia. Okay. The, question, the answer he says, we're from New York. So what's the, qu the question? Where are you from, right? That's the best question that fits. I think she's 22. In this case, we are asking, how old is she? Mm, no, my first language isn't Spanish, it's Portuguese. So the question is, is your first language Spanish, right? Um, Yes, I'm Japanese. I'm from Tokyo. So the question is, are you Japanese? Are you Japanese? Yes. So remember that when I answer yes or no, normally the question is a yes, no question. And it's uh, written with the verb to be, right? And when I give more information, for example, I think she's 22. Um, I am, uh, we are from New York. So in that case, we are asking with a WH word because I'm requesting more information. Letter C, correct, uh, choose the correct adjective to complete the sentence. In this case, is the adjective. For example, Larry isn't serious. So if he isn't serious, he is funny, right? Jean is really good student. She's very, Smart. So I'm very, I'm using a synonym, an adjective that is a synonym for good student. My teacher isn't short. She's tall. If she isn't short, it means that she's tall. My brother is good looking. He's handsome. Handsome is a synonym for good looking. And handsome and good looking is used for boys, right? for male. Letter D, choose the correct answer to the question. In here, um, again, we are using a yes, no questions and WH word questions. For example, the first one, is this Sue's scarf? Only two possible choices. Yes, it is or no, it isn't, right? So in this case, no, it's not hers, it's mine. Whose boot are these? I'm asking about uh, who's the owner. So in this case, I'm looking for an, a name, uh, the name of the owner of the boots. So the answer, maybe they're Katie's. Are these, uh, are these Lisa's gloves? In this case, the possible answer is yes or no, right? So this is a yes, no question. And the answer, yes, they're hers. Whose hat is this? Like in the boots, in this case, I'm asking who's the owner? So the answer, I think it's yours. Are these Peter and Katie's coats? Yes, no question. So the answer, no, they aren't theirs. They are ours. In the letter E, the challenge is to um, 
use the correct form of the present continuous uh, of the verb be. Oh, I mean of the verb, right? Uh, do you remember about the present continuous? How, uh, when do we use the present continuous? ¿Cuándo utilizamos el presente continuo? ¿Alguien se recuerda? Cuando estamos en ejecutando. Es que... uh -huh. Cuando hacemos algo en el momento. Exacto. When we're talking about something that we do at the moment. For example, right now, I'm speaking with, uh, I'm talking with my students and um, I'm speaking about the final exam. So I'm saying what I'm doing right now, yes? Or I can say, my students are listening uh, to me right now, okay? So that's what we are doing right now. So the question, are you wearing jeans? No, I am wearing a suit. Is Mr. Sims wearing a tie? No, he isn't wearing a tie. If you remember, in here we learned to this, uh, the difference between the verb wear and the verb use. We said that we use the verb wear when we have something on our bodies, right? Uh, it's llevar puesto, ¿verdad? Accessories, uh, shoes, and everything that is uh, on our bodies, like clothes, right? And use is when we, uh, it's not the same because use is utilizar, ¿verdad? Okay, uh, are Evan Sue wearing sweaters? No, they are not. It's very hot. Is it raining? No, it is not raining. It's snowing. So, and the last part is about the time. It's supposed that at this moment of your um, learning, you already know how to say the time in different ways. For example, here the challenge is to find the two possible ways to say the time. Mm -hmm. In this case, you say, what time is it? You can say, it's 20 after 20. two or it's 220 right mm -hmm. yes okay the second what time is it the two possible answers it's 10 to 7 or mm. it's 6 uh, 50 right you have two possible ways to answer this question the third what time is it it's 8 45 right or it's a quarter to nine Number four, what time is it? It's five after 11. It's 11.05. And that's it, we're finished. <laughs> Do you have questions? Tenemos preguntas? No. Uh, do you find a different topic in the, in the platform or a different, a diffi um, a ver, let's see, a difficult topic, let's see. Something that mm -hmm. you would like, uh, like, more uh, review, for example. Do you think that you are okay to finish the exam? No, teacher, yo tengo no, una dificultad ahí con, con, la, con, con la parte B con la del parte. examen final. Ajá, ¿qué le pasó con la parte B, mi estimado? Lo que pasa es que no entiendo ahí qué es lo que, en la que debo parte. de colocar. La parte B. Eh, es la pregunta. Es esto. Ajá. Si usted gusta, tómele una imagen ahorita. Lo que estamos evaluando ahí es que usted pueda hacer las preguntas adecuadas, ¿sí? Ya las respuestas Ajá. ya están dadas, ¿verdad? Usted tiene Ajá. toda la parte B, pero usted necesita poner toda la parte A, que es la Ajá. que dice answer, ¿sí? Are they from England? Y si usted se fija, usted lo puede poner con inicial mayúscula o con inicial minúscula. Pero lo que no debe de olvidar es que si es una pregunta, usted tiene que colocar el símbolo. Si el símbolo no está colocado aquí, si el símbolo sí, está claro. ya está colocado aquí, no lo ponga porque se lo va a duplicar y le va a dar error. ¿Sí? Entonces, si gusta, tómele una imagen a esto para que usted vaya comparando sus respuestas. Pero básicamente, eh, esa sería como como las, las preguntas lógicas que hay que hacer para obtener esas respuestas que usted ya tiene, ¿verdad? Porque es, es elaborar la pregunta para la respuesta que usted ya tiene. ¿Sí? Ok. 
Ok, uh, do we have extra questions? Tenemos más preguntas, chicos, acerca del examen final en este caso, porque ya hicimos un review de, de, de la parte de la plataforma, ¿verdad? De todos los temas. Mañana le voy a hacer. <laughs> ok. <laughs> ok, remember that no matter we finish today, if you have any difficulty, please write uh, to the WhatsApp group or write directly to me and I can help, ok? Ok, Ma Mañana no hay clases, ¿verdad, teacher? No, mañana no hay clases, chicos. No, no. Mañana están libres. Mañana tienen justamente para que puedan terminar el examen final y para que puedan resolver si traen algún pendiente en la plataforma. Yo esperaría que no, porque hemos tratado de irla trabajando a tiempo, ¿verdad? Pero si alguien todavía tiene pendientes en la plataforma, de verdad que encarecidamente les pido que se dediquen mañana a eso. Eh, lo digo en español, aunque ya terminamos la, las, las conferencias, pero si usted tiene dificultades para completar los ejercicios en la plataforma, escriba al grupo y en el grupo le ayudamos, ¿verdad? O si no lo quiere hacer el grupo, pues me escribe y yo en un momentito veo cómo le apoyo, ¿verdad? Eh, I encourage you to please finish by tomorrow. Les animo encarecidamente que terminen mañana. ¿Por qué razón? Porque si ustedes tienen fin de semana libre, o sea, ya se van al fin uh -huh. de semana okay. Hilo, sin ningún pendiente. You can print your certificate. You can uh, save it uh, in PDF. Les oh. recomiendo que lo graben en PDF, que lo impriman, porque esa es una credencial importante para ustedes. ¿verdad? Los cursos del Instafor valen mucho en temas laborales. And additionally, you are able to get enrolled in the next course. Adicionalmente, al, al tener el... el Diploma impreso, ¿verdad? Pues ya la plataforma le aparece completa y usted ya es elegible para poder ser matriculado en el otro curso, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí ya solo viene el proceso del paperwork, la papelería que usted tiene que presentar a los compañeros de inglés corporativo en las oficinas, ¿verdad? En este caso creo que todo es vía correo electrónico y pues ya usted avanza, ¿verdad? Con ese proceso y está seguro que va a ser incluido en el siguiente grupo. Ok, do you have questions so far? Tenemos Una preguntas. Más. El lunes tampoco, o oh, sí. Eh, no, a menos que los compañeros nos digan lo contrario, pero pues sería genial si ustedes terminan mañana y el lunes pudiéramos seguir, pues sería genial, pero va, va a depender de eso, ¿verdad? Que ustedes terminen y que ellos logren también hacer la papelería a tiempo. Okay. Eh, ellos, le van, ellos se van a estar contactando con ustedes para, para confirmarles la fecha del, del nuevo inicio, ¿verdad? Del okay. otro grupo. Ok, by my side, just say thank you very much for, uh, for all your interest in learning a new language. I appreciate your interest of being in class, no matter you were working, no matter any difficulties. So I appreciate that and I encourage you to continue, right? Because English can open many doors. Uh, nowadays, yes. it's very important and you have a very good level. You understand perfectly, you can express yourself very good. So I encourage you to don't stop and finish this goal, uh, like a personal you, and professional goal, okay? Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you very much, Thank you. teacher. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Hope to see you. Okay. Okay, teacher. Bye. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye. Okay.